due to generous donations of both time and money. For the many ways that you contribute and how it sustains this fellowship, we are truly grateful. This morning reading is adapted from The Soil That Sustains Us by Ariel Aronson Eves. The dictionary defines soil as the upper layer of earth in which plants grow or a black or dark brown material typically consisting of organic remains, clay and rock particles. But I'd like to think of soil as a community. There are three main components of soil, clay, sand, and silt. There's also a bit of organic matter made from decayed plant and animal material. When organic matter is really, really broken down, so it can't decompose anymore, it is called hummus, which shares a root with the word human. In addition to minerals and organic matter, also in soil are billions of microorganisms. Just like we humans need to get certain nutrients from food to be healthy, so too do plants. Plants are sunlight powered to make their own food and water. water. But just like we can't live healthily off only carbs, there are only some nutrients plants that they can't get through photosynthesis. Luckily, they've developed a system with soil exchange microbes. The microbes are able to break down minerals in rocks or capture nutrients from the air. In this and other ways, they get nutrients in forms that the plants can't take up. In exchange, the plants feed off the microbes' sugars. This is what happens in healthy soils. This, this system of cooperation breaks down when the plants stopped needing the microbes. Why would you need, why would they stop needing microbes when we can heavily apply chemical fertilizers the plants get addicted to to the quick fix? They are freed from the slow process of relationship building, of having to share. If the plants are annuals, they'll be gone the next year and the community system will have broken down. The next year's crop will need the chemical fertilizer to do well because the relationship between plants and the soil microbes has been suffered. It will take years to restore. But the degradation is preventable and restoration is possible. It just takes a lot of care and the learning to see crops not simply as products we take out of land but as a part of a valuable community. And that all starts with soil, learning to see soil as more than just dirt. You might even think of it as sacred. sacred circle we are part we are part of it there's an eternal sacred circle we are part part of it we are only part of it
earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. As Halloween approaches, known in many Earth-centered traditions by the name Samhain, and the holidays of All Saints Day and All Souls Day with which follow, we view this time of year through dual lenses. We celebrate and wear costumes and throw parties, and we may also reflect on those who have died in the past year or those ancestors with whom we want to be reminded and remain connected. The days closing out October and beginning November are both frivolous and solemn, as is our service today. We are weaving together the themes of celebration and reminding each other of our sacred connection to the earth. Our anthem had the lyrics, there's an eternal sacred circle. We are part of it. We are only part of it. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Everything that we are comes from the earth itself. The food that we eat, the clothes we wear, the homes we inhabit, the cars we drive. We human beings have gotten craftier over time about what we do with the raw components. But ultimately, everything we create has a beginning in the ground. The minerals that make up our bones and our blood, our skin and hair, all come from beneath our feet, and we ultimately return to the earth as well. So it makes a great deal of sense to me that we should honor the earth to the point of worshiping it in our own ways to hold it in reverence as the ultimate source and destination of all life on this planet. We can learn many things from the earth and the practices of religious traditions that keep the natural world at the center. In these traditions, we see the seeds for a way of living that promotes balance and care for the natural world, things that we seem to have a hard time centering in our daily lives things that it would be good to focus a bit more of our attention on. The idea that we are connected to the natural rhythm of the world around us is one that many parts of our society resists. Historically, some of our cultures have been more of the mindset that through ingenuity, we could harness and control the natural world to rise above it rather than be at its mercy or a part of it. Today, we are seeing the effects of that imbalance in many ways, but we are also invited back into relationship, back into covenant with the natural world as well. Another way of thinking about this connected is embedded in our UU value of interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence with reverence for the great web of life and with humility we acknowledge our place in it. We covenant to protect Earth and all beings from exploitation. We will create and nurture sustainable relationships of care and respect, mutuality and justice. We will work to repair harm and damaged relationships. We have our part to play in that work of repair and restoration. And now because our service has been interactive and will continue to be throughout the rest of our day together, I invite you to turn to one neighbor, keep listening, to turn to one neighbor and make one commitment. What is one thing you'd like to change about how you live in relationship with the earth and the environment moving forward from today? Again, you're, you're talking to one other person and making one commitment. Doesn't have to be a grand commitment. It could be a small commitment, but you're making it to one other person. Please turn to your neighbor and share.
One more minute. One more minute. If the other person hasn't started talking, they should be. One more minute. People are coming back. Wow, I did not expect that to happen. That's great. So we have our part to play in the to play in the work of repair and restoration. Again, we are not going to individually solve the problem, but each of us has a part in it. This is what we are called to remember. Not only that we are a part of this interdependent web, but that we are called to be in sustainable relationship with the web of existence and to repair what we collectively have harmed. We are called to be in community, to be in communion with the earth, as our reading today imagines. The soil itself is a community. When the soil is healthy and plants are in good relationship with the earth in which they grow, the microbes in the soil and the root systems of plants cooperate with one another. They feed one another. When this balance is disturbed, it leads to poorer soil and plants have a harder time growing. But the balance is restorable. Healing is possible. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Kenyan environmental leader Wangari Mathai wrote, if we live in wounded environments, water where water is polluted, air is filled with soot, soot and fumes, food is contaminated with heavy metals and plastic residues, or the soil is practically dust, it hurts us, creating injuries at a physical, psychological, and spiritual level. In degrading the environment, we degrade ourselves and all humankind. But this connection works both ways. In the process of helping heal the earth, we help ourselves. We see the, if we see the earth bleeding from the loss of topsoil, biodiversity, or drought and desertification, and if we help reclaim or save what is lost through regeneration of degraded forests, the planet will help us in our self-healing and indeed our survival. Mathai founded the Greenbelt Movement, which we've talked about in services in the past, to plant trees throughout Kenya and beyond. The Greenbelt Movement employs women to plant trees in communities and has led to over 51 million trees being planted and become a movement of repair. But it all started with one person and one tree. Repair of communities and repair of the environment because one is needed for the other. Denise Levertov's words in the back of our gray hymnal help me think about possibility as we move forward in this daunting task. But we have only begun to love the earth. We have only begun to imagine the fullness of life. How could we tire of hope? So much is in bud. How can desire fail? We have only begun to imagine justice and mercy. Only begun to envision how it might be to live as siblings with beast and flower, not as oppressors. Surely our river cannot already be hastening into the sea of non-being. Surely it cannot drag in the silt all that is innocent. Not yet, not yet. There is too much broken that must be mended. Too much hurt that we have done to each other that cannot yet be forgiven. We have only begun to know the power that is in us if we would join our solitudes in the communion of struggle. So much is unfolding that must complete its gesture. So much is in bud.
it can be overwhelming to think about environmental justice in this particular season. Why are we thinking about the earth when we should be thinking about voting after all? We're in Pennsylvania. Because the two are of course linked, environmental justice is political and it is connected to racial justice, disability justice, and economic justice. Mathai's Green Belt Movement empowers women and girls, provides economic stability, works on democratic issues as well as policy, and it even repairs the environment. That environmental repair in turn improves the health outcomes of communities. We often think about environmental justice as needing to convince people to sacrifice in order to save the planet. Or we think about the economic costs of doing things in more sustainable ways. These parts can be real, but the bigger reality is that there is a lens to view this work through, that doing this actually helps us live better lives and benefits us directly. We can center joy rather than despair while we work to repair our relationship with the earth. Robin Wall Kimmerer writes in Braiding Sweetgrass, even a wounded world is feeding us. Even a wounded world holds us, giving us moments of wonder and joy. I choose joy over despair, not because I have my head in the sand, but because joy is what the earth gives me daily and I must return the gift. That is why we vote, why we plant, and why we organize even when the world is on fire, especially when the world is on fire. We do these things small in their way, but when done in community, the individual acts become movements and planting a tree can change both ecosystems and societies. For our children and our children's children, we are called as keepers of the earth, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, so may it be. Oops, please rise and body your spirit and join me in singing the song Keepers of the Earth.
its riches and its beauty. Every ocean feeds our soul. ask you now to join me in our meditative prayer, which is uh, Charged from the Earth by Irene Glass and Rebecca Savage. So let us now enter into a time of awareness within ourselves and connection beyond boundaries, connection to one another, to that interdependent web of life of which we are but one small thread. As we breathe in, we are connected, and as we breathe out, we are connected. There is a song beneath the soil. Ten million million voices raise their call in no human language. Life throws through, flows through the tangle of roots, mycelium, microbiota, and crawling, burrowing, tunneling life. The song flows upward through the trunks and stems and blades of tender grasses and races out into the air. It is picked up and carried on no human tongues. It is in the footfall of paw and hoof. It hums in the buzz of wings and the fluttering of feathers. It shines on scales and fins and slithering skin. And if we are quiet and pay attention, Sometimes we remember that we are a part of this song as well, and we have notes to sing. The Anthropocene is an experiment. What happens when we humans forget that the life around us is part of us, that these lives have no less inherent dignity or worth? How many more singers of the Earth song will go silent forever? Today we are charged to remember to know that as we live together in community, we are also in community with the silently singing lives in the vast congregation of the earth as well. The interdependent web of existence is no allegory. It is as real as the heart beating within our chest. We are charged to do what we can to help those who cannot advocate with human language, who cannot scream for help when they are suffering. We have a role to play in softening the blow of the age of humans. We have a voice that can help to shape the world to come. We are so charged in the name of the sacred song, the tapestry of life of which we are a part. Let us remember and then act. May it be so. As part of our caring outreach to one another, we set aside a few moments to note both the sorrows and the joys in our lives. In these moments of peace and reflection, we turn our attention to one another. We hold each and all in our compassionate thoughts and the prayers of our hearts. This morning, we are lighting candles to mark the important moments in our lives. Each candle adds to the collective light of this community, a place that also holds the memories of those who have gone before and anticipates those who have yet to arrive. To share the joy or sorrow you would like held by our caring community, please text the number that is now on screen. Please include your name along with your sharing. It is the same number no matter how you join us today, and you can add it to your contacts for future weeks. I will read them aloud and Agnes will light a candle on your behalf. What is shared today will go out in our weekly caring notes for those who cannot be with us this morning. 
please remember to include your first and last name with what you share. And we light a final candle for all of the joys and sorrows that remain unspoken and deep within our hearts. With words spoken and candles lit, we honor our joys and our sorrows, those shared this morning and the many, many more that exist beyond words. Through our time together, our relationships are deepened and our community made whole. We will rise together. Was beautiful. Thank you, guys. Our chalice extinguishing words this morning are from Reverend Peggy Clark. Knowing how quickly the flame of truth can be extinguished, how easily the chalice of fellowship broken, let us be vigilant in faith, keep peace in our hearts, and make care for one another the watchword of our lives together. So our light goes out everywhere into the world. Our light goes out everywhere and healing and hope are needed. Let us go in peace and to serve this world one another. As our community departs from this service, may we remember all who came before. May we imagine all who will come after. May we honor all who are present with us here and now. In our time together, we create this community, one of promise, one of commitment, one of care for the world and one another. In our time together, may each of us become a sanctuary for all we meet on the journey. May we go together now and return again. <laughs>